Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's. We love that you are here today. My name is Steve Clark. I'm the pastor here uh, for a year now. We hit the one year mark, so uh, praise the Lord for that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's, been, uh, it's one of those things where you, you think, wow, it's only been a year. And then other times you're like, wow, it's only been a year. That's kind of really cool. But God uh, has blessed us, and I've been very blessed to be here with you today. Uh, just a couple of quick things for us today after this service. We do have a congregational meeting, so uh, for those of you who are members, we're going to encourage you to stick around. Uh, we do have some more business. The big thing, uh, we need to elect new members to our uh, mission and ministry council, so uh, please check that out. We have some prayers for people today uh, who are coming on and actually going off the board as well, so uh, you'll see that there. And then there's just a couple of um, uh, errors. <laughs> well, it's in, so I didn't even admit to that. On the calendar of events, for some reason, I said there's no joy study on Thursday. But of course there's a study on Thursday. I don't know why. Uh, the note just popped up, and I just uh, well, went right over that. And then next Sunday, we will have our Bible study right after service, as usual. I think those are the things that I wanted you to be aware of. Why don't we begin this morning, then, by singing our opening hymn, Son of God. We make a beginning in the name of the Father, 
in the Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will act. Be still before the Lord. And wait patiently for Him. O oh God, save me by your name. And vindicate me by your Christ. Let us make confession to God, our great Redeemer. Almighty God, who judges all the people with equity and truth, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are by nature sinful, and to that sin have had transgressions in thought, word, and deed. We have not lived as responsible stewards at all times. We have not shown full care for your creation, and have not sought new ways. Then peace, considerate, 
submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires of battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. You, you kill and you covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. Or when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people. Don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think Scripture says without reason that the spirit he caused to live in us envies intensely? But he gives us more grace. That is why Scripture says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you are able, would you please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark the ninth chapter. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child and had him stand among them. Taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ.
Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of the Lord for us today as we consider the goat, right, comes to us from our gospel reading, Matthew, or excuse me, Mark chapter 9, the 35th verse. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last, and the servant of all. This is the word. This is usually the time when I, when I pause in, in the message and in the service just to think about things that are excellent or praiseworthy as God calls us to. To think about and highlight perhaps ways in which God is moving that, as I said, frequent things that are oftentimes overlooked or maybe you don't see them because you're not here on a, on a regular basis like, like I am. And, and there's always so many things. It's one of the hardest things that uh, every week that I think about, what am I going to talk about? What, what excellent thing? And I, I try to look. What's amazing is, is I've been doing this, like, my eyes are always lifted up to see where God's moving, right? And, and, and I think if you get into the habit of thinking or, or talking about excellent, praiseworthy things, um, that, that your eyes look up, like, where's God moving? How's, how's God doing things? And uh, I know for me and in my life, uh, it, it has been very beneficial because I see the hand of God in so many different ways and so many different things. And as we're coming up to our, our congregational meeting here uh, later on this this morning, uh, you know, just thinking about our, our mission and ministry council, and it's been a, a great privilege and honor to serve alongside those who sit on the council. But we have two members that are stepping down, Lori and Dan, and, and just their service and their willingness to, and, and, and my ability to work with them over this last year has been uh, has been nothing but edifying uh, for me. Their, their encouragement and their uh, oftentimes just sort of quiet support. You know, I talked about Dan last week. But then we also have three members who are, who are continuing on, or maybe, well, actually four members, two of whom are continuing on, and two who are new that are coming on to the board. And again, that willingness to serve in, in such a capacity. We had a meeting on, on Tuesday. Uh, one of the things that we do in our meetings is we pause and we say, uh, for all of us, in the last month, what was a, what was a spiritual highlight that you had? <laughs> we talk about those. And I'm always so encouraged at the, at the deep and profound spiritual insights uh, that everyone brings to the table. I'm like, wow, this is awesome and this is amazing. And so uh, for those who have served, especially uh, Lori and Dan, and those who are continuing on serving, can we praise God for those servant hearts? <laughs> you know, Jesus says if you want to be great, you should be servant. You should serve. You should serve and be servant of all. And a lot of what uh, the MNC does behind the scenes, you don't you don't see. Right? They, they, they do it quietly, and they don't do it for applause on Sunday mornings. Uh, they, in fact, usually they're embarrassed when I start talking about them or, or saying they're crazy. They're like, oh, no, I, I want to hide. I want to be uh, off to the side. And I think that's, that's probably the, the right attitude when it comes to, to the accolades that people hand out in the world. There are, there are some who seek those accolades, who, who try to be the greatest of all time. And that's what the GOAT, goat stands for, greatest of all time. And probably you've heard this uh, phrase kicked around frequently, and uh, people always want to be, uh, especially, I, I don't know why it is in sports particularly, people want to be the GOAT, right? Uh, I want to be the GOAT as far as it comes to wide receivers or, or running backs, if you're talking about football. I want to be the GOAT uh, when it comes to track and field. Uh, but who is? Who is the GOAT? I mean, Ali, right? Muhammad Ali he claims to be the greatest. Wasn't, it? wasn't that his, his, his moniker, right? <clears throat> the greatest. Was it Ali? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a big boxing fan, but I remember that. And I was like, wow, oh, that's rather kind of arrogant to, to claim that one. What about Brady? What's, what's amazing here is I can just put in last names, and you guys know exactly who I'm talking about, right? So, so they're well known. Uh, and some people would argue whether or not Brady is the greatest of all time. He's uh, got quite a, quite a resume. You, you could maybe make that case. What about Biles? Right? Again, I didn't put her first name on there, but Simone uh, Biles, if you watched the Olympics this year, she uh, competed and again added to her gold medal count. Uh, she had the, the necklace. She had a, she had a diamond encrusted gold uh, goat necklace that she wore. Uh, and you're like, wow, she actually was, she admitted later she's kind of embarrassed to wear that because everyone kind of gives her that moniker. But that was a little bit of a, of a flex. As far as gymnasts are concerned, but is she the, is she the goat? And what about Jordan? And again, I'm talking about Michael Jordan when it comes to 
to basketball in the NBA. Uh, and again, people will try to argue about this. And if you ever want to get into a good, uh, long, drawn-out sports conversation with someone, start start pr promoting one person that you think is the goats, or and in your person uh, personal opinion, the greatest uh, of all time. And maybe uh, if you really want to get to the greatest of, of all time, and if you start adding uh, qualifiers, uh, any one of us can be the greatest of all time. You know, that, that, that's actually the most amazing thing. Because Tom Brady is not the greatest of all time when it comes to uh, Olympic gymnastics, right? <laughs> you would laugh and you're like, oh, but there's no way. And, and, and Michael Jordan is not the greatest of all time when it comes to football, right? It, it just, it, it, they're, they're actually qualifiers here. It, each one of them, the greatest of all time, within their sport, perhaps. But you know what? I can be the greatest of all time within my own family. You know I mean, I've got seven brothers and sisters, but I'm the greatest of all time who was the fourth child, you know, of my parents. <laughs> the greatest fourth child of all time for my mom and dad, right? <clears throat> right? If we add enough qualifiers, any one of us can be the greatest. And, and maybe what we're doing is, is we want to look for other people to give us uh, the accolades that we can do that, right? <clears throat> but really, who is the Bible, I suppose? But when you read through Scripture, who is the greatest of all time from, from Scripture? Now, obviously, the, the Sunday school answer is Jesus, right? But I mean, I'm talking about of, of, of the heroes of the Bible, other than Jesus, other than God. Who is the Bible's greatest? Is it, is it Abraham? I mean, he's, he's the father of the, of the first covenant. You can read in Genesis chapter 12, God says he's going to become a great nation. Right? He's going he's to do great things through Abraham. Uh, maybe Abraham, we, we talk about the father of, of all those nations, father of Isaac and, and, and of Jacob, right? And, and so here he is. He's, is he the greatest? Or what about Jacob? Maybe we want to skip down and go, go to the third generation of Abraham in that family because Abraham's other name is Israel. Right? And I mean, we still talk about Israel as a nation today. We don't really talk about Abraham as much. But boy, as soon as you mention Israel, you're actually talking about Abraham's grandson, Jacob, whose other name was in Israel. The, the whole rest of the Old Testament, right, after you get to three Genesis, is about the children of Israel. It's about the nation of Israel. So is Jacob uh, the greatest of all time? Maybe Moses, as he, as he leads the children of Israel out of out of Egypt, leading them for 40 years in the desert. Is Moses the greatest or, or maybe Elijah? When it comes to the time of Jesus, people are, are asking about um, if Jesus is the Elijah, that is the kind of Elijah. Uh, when Jesus, actually earlier in the, in the Gospel of Mark, when we read in the Transfiguration, there's two other people that show up. And that's why I put Moses and Elijah there, because they show up with Jesus. So you would say, wow, well they show up with Jesus at the beginning of Mark, chapter 9. Uh, that got to be pretty, pretty good. <coughs> Abraham and Jacob are there. But Moses and Elijah are. Who's the Bible spoke? Does it really matter? <coughs> and maybe, maybe, maybe that's the, the, the point. Is, is that we can find in every one of the Bible heroes, as we go back, every single one of them has their faults, has their foibles, has, has, has a downfall. That's one of the things that I love about the Scripture, about, about our, our Bible compared to other ancient writings about, about kings or heroes. Because it, it seems like the, the, other than uh, the Hebrew people and writing about their heroes, most of the ancient writings are very sanitized. Right? The, the heroes or the kings or the pharaohs, they never did anything wrong. Right? Like there's, there's very little record of, of someone who is, who is in a position of leadership who says, I want you to write, the, uh, write, write my, my biography. Right? And, and, and all of a sudden they write, everything's good, and it's amazing, and it's glowing, right? But we know that that's not true, because all of us stumble at one point in time and another. And, and the Bible is, is incredibly honest about its heroes. Jacob, for all of the amazing things that God does through Jacob, he, has, he actually tricks his brother into the first birthright, because Jacob wasn't the oldest, his, his brother Esau was. Right? Abraham doesn't believe God's promises, and he has another child, Ishmael, out of wedlock, trying to make God's promises work. Right? We can have Moses strikes a rock, and God says, just tap a rock. Right? And that's why Moses can't go into the, the promised land. 
And Elijah, well, Elijah does some things right, does a lot of things right, does other things wrong. We, we have mistakes on every single front. Elijah doesn't trust that God's going to provide for him, even after he has a great victory over the Baal prophets, right, with Jezebel. He gets scared and runs away. Time and again, we see the greatest people and the greatest heroes of Scripture fall, and they fail. But what makes them great? What, what is the greatness, or what is greatness, the greatness that God is looking for? What does the Bible say is great? Well, number one, we have to say God. Of course, God is great. Uh, the Father and Creator of the world is the greatest of all time, because He's the one who even invented time. He brought time into existence when he called and said, hey, now there's going to be a day, and there's going to be a night, and then and he says, there's the first day, right, in Genesis chapter 1. So we have to start out with God, and, and in the book of Psalms, Psalm 40, you read here, may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, may those who long for your saving help always say, the Lord is great, or great is the Lord, or great is his faithfulness, or anything. Mean, his, his greatness no one can fathom. I, mean, I, could, I, could, I could put Bible verses, Bible verses, Bible verses, uh, basically, the whole book of Psalms. Let's just throw the 150 chapters, right? Uh, saying that God is great. <clears throat> but more specifically, God's love is great. Look at this again from, from the book of Psalms, Psalm 8, verse 1. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. See, great is your love. And not only do we have a great and almighty and powerful God, but, but it's tempered by His great and amazing love, His mercy, His grace. You see, so that when we fail, when, when we're trying to become the greatest at whatever it is that we're doing, uh, that when we get our ego, right, and our head can barely fit through a doorway, uh, when we're thinking so highly of ourselves, that, that really what we should be doing is singing the Lord's praises. And that God comes to us with, with grace and mercy and, and Oftentimes has to humble us so that we can understand how great he is and how great his love is for us. God's faithfulness is great. Here it is in, in Lamentations 3. The, the they, God's compassions, are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. That's what they offer in Lamentations, right? Right? Great is your faithfulness. You're probably singing that song in your head right now. The Bible says that is great. God is great. His love is great. His faithfulness is great. And His power is great. This is from Jeremiah 32. Sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and art, outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. And I know that from, from Jeremiah, because as we were reading earlier in Jeremiah 11, where we, we talked about that there were people plotting against Jeremiah, and he was oblivious to the fact he was like a lambing led to the slaughter. He's like, ooh, I'm just going about my business. And if you read Jeremiah, you find out, man, this guy got put through the ringer how many different times? Just throwing in a cistern once and, uh, for a couple of days. And I mean, the kings liked him, and the kings didn't like him. And I mean, he was in favor and out of favor back and forth. Uh, the wild, wild prophet, uh, the prophet Jeremiah. But again, who does God say? So we have God is great in the Bible, but who does the Lord say is great? And the number one on the list of people or that are great are those who fear the Lord. And that's just a recognition and an acknowledgement of the awesomeness of God. Right? <clears throat> I mean, reading in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Or um, here from Psalm 33, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear Him, on those whose hope is in His unfailing love. Those who, who rest upon the Lord, who trust in God, those who are the great ones. You want to be great with God. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Understand him. You're here today, and, I, and, and because you, you are here, I, I have to uh, assume that you have some knowledge of God, that you, you, you recognize him, that you honor him, that you're willing to give him and come here a time out of your day, time out of your week to spend with God and say, God, I honor you. I, you, you are great. So perhaps all of us are great, or on the path to greatness, if here, first and foremost, we can fear the Lord, understand, awe, be in awe of the Lord. But God goes more than that. Just having awe of the Lord is one thing, but, but now action, as we put it, how we act, that should reflect that. And the Lord loves those who are just, those who go about life in the right way. 
The Lord loves justice and hates injustice. Isaiah 1 verse 17. Isaiah telling the people of, of Israel, right, learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, and plead the case of the widow. God loves those who, who take their position that they've been given and help other people. Especially those who, who seem to be oppressed, those, those who are on the outskirts, right? That seem the world seems to have turned against them. We should be their champions. Be just. The Lord loves it when, when those who use their influence to help other people lower them themselves. Right? That's, that's really what justice is about. And then to do it humbly. Right? And we can we can get a big head about all these things. And in fact, uh, a little bit later in, in, in our congregational meeting, I'll tell you some of the awesome things that God has been doing uh, here in, 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 at, at St. John's, the progress we're making. And, and I know full well <clears throat> that I could have probably twice as long of a presentation of all the failures I've had. Okay? Um, because I know, in, in, in my own mind, I can tell you all the great things that are happening, but I can tell you all the times that I've tripped and stumbled as well. And, and uh, it, it, I know there's, there's a balance that needs to be struck there. That, that I don't want you to lose confidence in me and say, well, pastor's just a train wreck, right? right. <clears throat> that guy's a mess. But I, I am. Right? I'm, I'm a sinner just like you. I struggle. I, I hit the wall. I, I'm filled with anxiety and worry at times. I, I, I get full of myself and my ego, and I have to be humbled. And, and it, this goes around and around. And so the, the struggles that you have that you go through, and they're basically something to go, well, Pastor, you wouldn't understand. No, I get it. Right? I'm right there with you. But I know that as we sang in that previous hymn, that the confidence that I have is not in the good things that I've done or, or the bad things that I've done. It's that I'm baptized in Christ. And I, and I love that, that hymn because we say it over and over again. Here's my confidence. I'm baptized in Christ. I'm a child of God. And God can say, I'm baptized in Christ. This is it. I'm baptizing Christ. The only thing I can boast about is Jesus. <clears throat> Peter says this, all of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another, because God opposes the proud and shows faith to the humble. When we fill ourselves up with pride, we start thinking that we are the greatest. Now, even if you're the greatest of all time is the fourth child, right? <clears throat> There's a danger that all of a sudden we think more highly of ourselves than we ought. Paul warns us about that. But that we become unusable by God. Because we're like, oh, no, I can do it. I can do it. We're like those uh, toddlers, right? <clears throat> those little uh, kindergarten, first graders. They're like, oh, no, they're, they're seeking out their independence. They're like, no, 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 I can do it. I can do it. I am blessed to be able to help out in the car line. Uh, most mornings, help the kids get out of their cars and get into the uh, get into the school building to start their day. And I, and, and I laugh at, at some of the kids. They'll, they'll some love for me to help them, and others are like, nope, I got it. I got it. I'm going to do this all by myself. You know, I'm like, it's going to take twice as long, but okay. You know, there's cars waiting behind you, but I'm going to let you, you know, flex your independence, right? And we're going to that's not how God is, right? When we get filled with our own pride, we're like, no, I got this, God. I got this. I got this. And he's like, <sighs> all right. I'll let you know it's be better if I help you, but <clears throat> let me step back. As we come to seek greatness, actually don't seek to be great, just seek to do good. Right? That, 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 that here's, here's the secret to being a Christian. Don't seek to be great, seek to do good. Seek to do the right things. How does God put you in this world to do what is right? Not what is great. And by continuing to do what is good, by continuing to do what is great, the Lord will lift you up. Right? If you do good, if you do right, God will make you great. And I think about the greatest of all time. Who's the greatest Christian of all time? Who's the greatest Jesus follower of all time? <clears throat> and the answer is probably we don't know. <laughs> we shouldn't know. Because they, they're the ones who, who served constantly. Right? Helped other people out, propped them up, and their name might never have been written in Scripture. Right? They never, might never have been written in the books of history. But it is written in the book of the Lamb. Right? It is written in the book of heaven. That's the only place that is important to have our names written. So can
can we seek to do good? Hebrews 13, 16 says this, and do not forget to do good, to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. So as we think about the greatness, and we think about the greatest of all time, maybe we reflect even upon the disciples asking about this. Matthew has a more um, expansive uh, conversation where John and, and <clears throat> James are trying to sit at Jesus' right and left hands. And, and Jesus said, That's, you guys are asking the wrong question. Because you're asking to be great. You're asking to be elevated. And as James says, our job is to humble ourselves so that the Lord might lift us up. So when we have that sober reality as we come today and receive the very body and blood of Christ, and with and under the spread and wine, as we come to communion to recognize that, yes, we're not as great as sometimes we like to think of ourselves. That we have that sober judgment. And realize that we need this meal in order that the Lord would lift us up. In order that He would make us great. Not in the eyes of this world, but that our names might be written in the book of heaven. Right? That our names might be written in the book of the Lamb. That we would have that confidence of our salvation. And that as life goes on, we say, my, my boast is I'm baptized in Christ. That Jesus is the one who has done it for me. Paul speaks again and again. He's going to boast. He's going to boast of his sufferings. He's going to boast of his shortfalls. He's going to boast in his weaknesses. For he knows when he is weak, that's when God is strong. So let's let God be great in our lives. And let's seek to just be good. <laughs> to do the good things that he has put us on this earth to do. As we close, I just want to fast forward a few more verses in Hebrews chapter 13. This promise, this blessing that is given here. <clears throat> now may the God of peace, who, the blood, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd, that great shepherd of our sheep, <clears throat> equip you with every good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, that great shepherd, that great shepherd for us, that as we seek to live for him, we might be humble, doing the good he has prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. As we now, I invite you as you are able to stand as we confess our common faith, Let's use these ancient words of the next century. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of the Father.
Lord, may these go out and do good in your kingdom, that your great name would be proclaimed. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now let's pray for all people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have called us into your family. We have done nothing to earn our position with you, but through your Son, Jesus Christ, and our baptism into his name, into his life, and his death, and his resurrection, you have welcomed us into your family. Now, as your children, give us the spirit and encouragement to go and build each other up in that word, to go and do good in your name, that the light of your love would shine through us, Lord, in your mercy. And having Father, we give you thanks and praise for the ministry here at St. John's, our church, our school, and our child care. We ask you to continue to bless the leaders here as we move forward, sometimes in the uncertain futures, Lord. But we know that you are there. You are leading, you're guiding, and directing. We ask that you bless our congregational meeting later on today as we talk about how we can continue to move forward. We give you thanks and praise for the service of Dan and Lori on on the NMC, and ask that you would bless them, Lord, now, as they transition into other uh, other situations or service to you, bless them, Lord, that they might do good for you, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Lord God, we pray for the, our NMCs, and now continue picking up that mantle and moving forward for those who are uh, up for election for Christie and, and Jim and Dean and Don, Lord, may your spirit be poured out upon them that they may continue to, to rest upon you, that we would recognize that your mighty outstretched arm can reach in all places to give us the power and encouragement to go forward. Bless those who are continuing on in the MMC, that together here in this place, we might be able to proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, in many ways, doing good for you and for your great name. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, all of these things and even more, we put into your hands. We trust in your mercy. We trust in your love. We trust in your faithfulness and your power. Great, all of those things you've shown clearly when you sent your son Jesus Christ here on earth. And while he was here, he taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
heavenly food, the very body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask now that as we go from here, we be strengthened, encouraged, built up, Lord. As we've been humbled before you to admit our sins, now you have lifted us up with our forgiveness, lifting us up again with your Spirit. Send us out that we might go and do good in this world for you. We pray this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.